It's my pleasure now to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Ed Manansala, the El Dorado County Superintendent of Schools. Superintendent Manansala was a member of the first cohort of the School of Education's Candell program, earning his doctorate in educational leadership in 2011. He and his colleagues from that cohort have gone on to become regional leaders, making their mark at many levels in California public education, from school districts to the California Department of Education to community college leadership. He has spent more than 20 years working in the public school system. He started as a coordinator of learning support services with the Sacramento Unified School District and then became principal and superintendent of the St. Hope Public Schools. He served as the deputy superintendent of El Dorado County before his appointment to superintendent of schools at the beginning of 2016. He was also appointed by the State Board of Education as the vice chair of the California Practitioners Advisory Group and he will be the president-elect of the California County Superintendents Educational Services Association. Dr. Menensala has a vision for creating con conditions for all children to meet their intellectual and academic potential. He thoughtfully and persistently advocates for a wide range of students, including those from low-income families, those involved in the foster care or juvenile justice systems, and emerging bilingual students. Dr. Menensala has fully embraced the challenge and vision of the Candell program, acting as a reflective scholar slash practitioner as he serves the students and families of El Dorado County. He is an alumnus who truly embodies the School of Education's commitment to a quality education for all students. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Ed Menensala to the podium. Today we celebrate you, graduates, not only for achieving your degrees, but for your commitment to a profession that meaningfully changes the trajectory of a child, family, and community. Each of you has a personal story, and you enhance the stories of others as you move forward collectively within this influential profession. You will develop a powerful narrative in schools and communities throughout California. Last week, I was asked to participate on a panel for the National Superintendents Academy, and I was asked, as a leader, how important is this idea of one's story? I responded, a student's story, a teacher's story, and the collective story we create are the passion and engine behind our work. My belief was validated by a gentleman I met at the event. Jerome shared the story of his life. He was born in Sri Lanka during a time of civil war. Violence and crime was rampant, and after many years of struggle, his family was sponsored and moved to the Bay Area when he was 11. The family experienced great fear, given they were not educated, nor did they speak English. Five days after moving to the US, Jerome enrolled in the seventh grade. He was placed in a special education class, and one year later, it was acknowledged that he was inappropriately placed, and he transitioned into general education with support as an English learner. In his first two years of high school, he had no goals. Through the encouragement of a physics teacher and the support of AVID, Jerome's goals sharpened, and after graduating from high school, he attended UC Davis, John Hopkins University, and UC San Francisco. He's now an OBGYN doctor. When I listened closely to Jerome's story, it was clear that each individual teacher relationship was influential. And while I thought he may have harbored anger for being inappropriately placed in special education, he shared, it was the best thing that happened to me. During such a vulnerable time of transition into the US, kindness and support were of high importance. And he received this from his teachers and students. And in class, small attempts and victories were celebrated, just from word pronunciation to completing sentences. I was moved after my conversation with Jerome. The story may have had a very different ending if his first teachers hadn't re read his potential, listened to his progress, and believed in the vision of who he could be. 
What a powerful profession you are in. We must remember to listen. Every student, educator, and community, once again, has an important story. I learned in my most formative stage of being an educator that the dream of a child is gold. When a student's aspirations are articulated, it, become, it can become a driving force for the school community. If we were attentive, in my first year working in education at Bret Hart Elementary, I integrated into my practice home visits, where I spent listening, spent time listening to hopes of the students and parents, their stories. School community meetings started with students sharing their goals and aspirations. And while this may seem like a simple activity, this practice was invaluable. The benefits are many. Belief, commitment, vision, and love for students grow. And when a student feels they are heard and senses the commitment of a teacher and community behind them in a real way, a sense of possibility comes alive. And regardless of their circumstances, we must listen with purpose. A student story. Last week, I attended Golden Sierra High School's graduation. As an, and as I sat on stage, I witnessed a resilient young lady receive her diploma to a cheering school community. Her name was Faith. On Faith's mortar board, it stated, my father would be so proud, 5 30, 17. These words were a part of Faith's story. You see, three days before Faith's graduation, her father passed. Her mother wasn't in the home, so her father's pass passing left her home alone. And I spoke with Faith. She shared her determined plans to attend college in the fall and major in kinesiology. And how now, without the presence of her mother or father in her life, the students, faculty, and the community have lifted her up, creating a collaborative support network of commitment around her. Faith's story is one of grief, resilience, and hope. As I share with you Faith's story, I picture Faith nestled in the hands of her community. This community is now an important part of Faith's story, an educator's story. If time was not a factor, the opportunity to hear each of your stories would be a privilege for all of us. What experiences have most shaped your life? What are you passionate about? What are you trying to create in the world? Here's one of your stories. This colleague of yours was raised in a working class single parent home in Vallejo. Life was challenging. A counseling error in her senior year of high school resulted in her not meeting graduation requirements and not being able to walk in her graduation ceremony. Ironically, she was informed that she was a National Merit Scholar. Following high school and for 20 years, she had nightmares that she did not finish school. Life beyond high school was filled with great struggle, drug addiction, homelessness, a challenging marriage, and a pivotal point of change occurred spiritually and in the time of homelessness. Rather than focus solely at her own problems, she began to focus on caring for and serving others. As a parent of five children, career goals began to sharpen, and higher education would become a critical path to achieve her goals at Contra Costa Community College and UC Davis. A significant experience for her at UC Davis was in her relationship and work with Dr. Paul Heckman and Dr. Gloria Rodriguez. She shared, they encouraged and challenged me to express my authentic voice. I would hear them say to me, you belong here, and we want to hear your voice. Your colleague felt that her voice and her story was valued. For this graduate, more education means greater power, and with greater power, a greater responsibility to make a difference in the lives of many. Lorraine Wilkins, will you please stand up? Why is this idea of a powerful story relevant and important to the educational profession today? Students, teachers, and communities are experiencing exponential change in education. The changes are occurring at the federal, state, and local level. In just the last few years, there's been a convergence of reforms altering California's educational landscape. New standards, a new assessment system, a new accountability system, 
And if that was not enough, the school finance system was overhauled. These changes have shifted greater decision-making authority to local school districts and the communities they serve. We have shifted from a climate of punitive accountability to one that emphasizes local control and engagement, listening to the community. A significant piece of my own story in the old paradigm was an urban high school principal that partnered with students, parents, teachers, and community leaders to transform a challenging school. Attendance, safety, and achievement were struggling. And I personally dealt with a shooting inside of a classroom. But on a daily basis, the school listened to the stories of our students and heard the hopes and dreams of our community for their children. This connection energized us to work long and hard for change. With focus and collective effort over the years, the culture of the school transformed, and four-year college acceptance rates increased from 25 to 95 percent. We had to keep our eye on the performance of standardized tests to avoid punitive consequences, while listening and honoring the aspirations of an urban high school to become a strong college prep system and community. In the current climate, schools, districts, and communities are engaged in developing locally driven goals and aspirations, changing their community's story. In West Sacramento, the city aspires to implement quality preschool for all, access to a guaranteed college savings account entering kindergarten, a paid internship for high school students, and a one-year free tuition at a local community college at the point of high school graduation. The opportunity for local educators to take bold action for students is at hand, but being attentive to the stories and aspirations of students and the community is critical. Not long ago, I recall sitting in your seat with my colleagues. We had individual stories, but we knew together we would create a new story in California. Graduates are impacting practice, policy, and research. UC Davis graduates are influencing students at all levels, in the classroom, schools, county offices of education, the Department of Education, and the State Board. Now you join us. Yesterday was a challenging day for me. I woke up, and it's the worst message you want to hear as an educator. Juwan Parker, a young man that I taught as a freshman and was also his principal, was shot and killed in his community. Our school community is grieving in Sacramento. But the contrast to me today is that I am inspired by you. I am encouraged by you. And the work that we're doing is important. I've served in urban communities, suburban communities, and rural communities, low-end communities, and communities of wealth. Regardless, students and parents and communities have deep dreams for their children, and they are pure. And you are going to launch them into those dreams. Congratulations, graduates. <laughs>